Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stop playback at the stopped point in Reaper. Now this question comes up a lot, and I think the reason it's so confusing is based on the wording. So let's go through what we're talking about. In Reaper, if we hit play, and then we hit stop, it goes back to the start point, or the edit cursor goes back to the start point. But sometimes you want it to behave differently. Now I know in Logic, by default, it stops where you hit stop. And in Pro Tools, it's an option. But in Reaper, it seems like it's not. If we go to our preferences, and we go down here to editing behavior, you'd think it would be here. In fact, there is an option to move edit cursor to the end of the recorded items on record stop. This will create the behavior that we want, but only when recording. It doesn't work for playback. So if you want the behavior, where when you hit play, and then we hit stop, it stops right at the point when you hit stop. So our edit cursor will move over here. Now there's two different ways to create the desired effect. The first way is by using pause. And the second way is by using a custom action, which was suggested by John Tidy over at the Reaper blog. So the custom action was his idea. Now both ways will work, and they both have their advantages and disadvantages, so you can choose the one that works best for you. Let's start with pause. Watch down here on the transport. If I hit pause, it stops right there. Hit play again, it continues from that point. Hit pause, and it creates that behavior. So if we go to the actions menu and type in transport, we'll see that by default, we can play and pause by hitting command space on the Mac or control space on the PC. So let's do that. Hit spacebar, hit that keystroke, and it pauses instead. Hit it again, it continues to play, hit that keystroke, and it pauses playback at the stop point. Now, if you're like me, it can be difficult to remember to hit it. Sometimes you want to stop at bar three, and you forget, and you hit the space bar instead. And then it goes back to the beginning. So to work around this, we just have to change our actions. Go down here, and add a key command, and we'll type in space. Now we do that, it doesn't show up. We have to choose this option here, special key. The space bar is considered a special key. So hit that first, hit the space bar, and it shows up. Now in doing this, we're overriding the default behavior right down here. Play stop, but that's okay. Hit yes, and now we can use the space bar to get that behavior. Hit the space bar, it plays, hit it again, it pauses, or it stops at the stop point. Hit it again, it plays, hit it again, it stops at the stop point or it pauses. I find this a lot easier than remembering the keystroke. But also if you like me, sometimes you want to work different ways. So you could go back to the actions menu and change it each time. But if you do that very often, I would suggest doing it this way. Let's put this back to its default with play stop being the space bar. And let's save it. We'll select this one and this one. And we're just gonna save those two keystrokes. This makes it a lot easier if you create a lot of custom keystrokes and you don't wanna have to keep saving this over and over again. We could just save certain keystrokes and recall just those. So we'll select these two. We'll export it down here. Export selected items. And it goes to this folder. We'll name this normal playback or default playback, and that's gonna work like the default. So if we hit the space bar, it plays, hit it again, it goes back to the beginning. But now we could change it. Let's go back over here to play pause, make this the space bar, 
and save both of them again. We want to save both. So there isn't a conflict. Export the selected items. We'll name this stop at stop point or pause playback. So we hit the space bar. It plays. Hit it again. It pauses. So now we want to switch behavior. Go to the actions menu. Go to import. And import the default behavior. So now I can hit play. Hit it again. It goes back to the start point. And if you want to switch the behavior, go back to the actions menu. Import. And this time we're going to import pause playback. And now we'll get the other behavior. Hit the space bar. It plays. Hit it again. It stops at the stop point. Or it pauses. Now the next option is even easier and more direct because it actually stops. Instead of pausing, it involves creating a custom action. So let's open up our actions menu and let's create a custom action. To find our first action using the filter, we'll type in move edit cursor to play cursor. And right over here is the action we want. Let's bring this over here. And then we want to add the default action for play and stop. Right here, the transport one. Let's bring this over. Let's give it a name. We'll call it stop at end. And right here is our custom action. So what this is going to do, when we trigger this custom action, it's going to move the edit cursor to your play cursor. Then it's going to actually stop or play. So now let's give this a keystroke. We'll make it the space bar. It's going to overwrite the default. Now if we hit the space bar, it's going to play. But if we hit it again, it quickly moves the edit cursor to the play cursor. So our edit cursor started out over here. Before it stops, it moves it to your position when you trigger it. So when it plays over to here, it's going to move it, and then it's going to stop. And if you hit the space bar again, it's going to play normally. Because the edit cursor and the play cursor are already in the same position. Hit play, it plays, hit it again, it moves the edit cursor to the play cursor, and then it stops. So just like the first way, it performs the same action. The only difference is it actually stops. It doesn't pause. Hit the space bar, hit it again, and it stops right at that point. And if you want to switch it back to the default behavior, go back to our actions menu and switch the keystrokes. Delete this one, type in play stop, and put it back over here. And now it behaves the default way. I find this just as useful as having a preference. But either way, we can now work in either mode. So that's pretty much it. That's stopping playback at the stop point in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!